You know, hallelujah is an, an imperative or command that means praise God. Do it. <laughs> but what do we do when we have a broken hallelujah? I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm sitting in a broken hair with a really bad haircut, it's really hard to praise God. I have to work really, really hard at it. I think we've at least all been there with a bad haircut. You know how that is. But we know what we teach, what's the tenant, tenant of our teaching is we live in a harmonious universe. Life is always for us and never against us. Sometimes it's really, really hard to reconcile that to put that together, to understand. How many of you would like to live in a harmo more harmonious universe? We all would. Well, guess what? We're at the right place because we're part of the solution. We're here because we know better and we're learning all the time. We want to make things better, to do better in this thing called life. This is not a new idea, this harmony of spirit that we live in. Ernest Holmes said, life is one enormous, co-creative, cooperative, interrelated creation. Do we believe that? There's only one answer to that, so please answer it. Yes. OK, good. Oh, that was a hard one. Even though there were only two possible answers. Well, there are three, really. But yes, 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 yes. We believe that. But in ancient Greece, Pythagoras and his followers believed that the universe created music, the music of the spheres, the sun, the moon, the planets, all working on mathematical equations because numbers were his thing, believe that everything is, comes from the numbers, the equations, but they made sounds. They made a symphony, music of the spheres. And if you listen, you can feel with the inner ear here, things working together for good. Ernest Holmes says, there's a song at the center of everything. The music of the spheres is not an illusion. It is not an illusion. It is real. He goes on to say, we must uncover this song that's in each and every one of us this unique and special song designed just for us to bring our own warmth and color and vibration and creativity to the world, we each must uncover this song and permit it to saturate our souls with joy. Are you ready? Are you ready to be filled with that beautiful music that can create harmony in life? So, you know, if, if we all come from this symphony of things working together for good, what's the problem? I mean, don't you find it's kind of difficult to feel in sync with everything and everybody? Not all the time, but some of the time anyway. It's a hard call because we have minds that have been given free will. We have been given the ability that we can create thoughts that instead of thinking, oh, we're creative, we're connected, not only to God and its wisdom and intelligence and all that's good, but to each other. We can think thoughts that say we're separated. You know, harmony, if you think about it, is really about blending. And I loved what you read, Reverend Sage, about the yin and the yang, or just the, the balance of the opposites, or whatever it is, it was beautiful. But we don't think that way so much at this time. If something's different than we are, if we don't understand something, or if we've been filled with prejudice from who knows where, that we prejudge things without really knowing them. We start separating things into categories of good and bad and yes and no, and it starts creating separation in us. And we don't even know it when we're here, really as cooperative, co-created beings we start feeling separate from all life has to offer. Once again, this is nothing new. I read last week a quote from the Bhagavad Gita, that 700 verse uh, Hindu scripture that's ancient, where the Lord Krishna is telling a, 
a warrior that's going off into to war. He said, we will never find peace if we live in this pair of opposites. Jesus simplified that. He said, well, he didn't make it simple, but he simplified the words and said, love your enemies. It's not enough to just love God and love the people close to you. We've got to start stretching. It doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of time with them, okay, or any. <laughs> you just have to love them. Just love them. Rumi, a little bit later than Jesus, and the Bhagavad Gita, 13th century Sufi mystic, said, all of your anxiety, listen to I want try to put this on and see how it feels, because the first time I read it, I went, huh, what? All of your anxiety is because of your desire for harmony. Seek disharmony, and you will find peace. I have enough disharmony, thank you, and I'm not feeling very peaceful, okay? <laughs> but he goes on to say, this is good, he says, this life, the life of this world is nothing but the harmony of opposites. Is nothing but the harmony of opposites. Watch two men washing clothes. I'd like to see one man washing clothes to say the truth. <laughs> I'll talk about Kirk and his coffee in a minute, but he doesn't know how to turn the washing machine on. But anyway, watch two men washing clothes. One makes the dry clothes wet. The other makes the wet clothes dry. It may seem like they're thwarting each other, but their work is a perfect harmony. Every holy person seems to have a different doctrine a different practice, but there's really only one work. We know what that work is. That work is to make our connection with that something greater than we are. That connection is about that connection to spirit, which is the creator and uniter of all. You and I have a choice in every moment if we want to feel that connection or if we want to push it away and push away the divine guidance, push away the love and support and beauty and harmony that spirit wants to give us all the time. We have to learn the practices that can keep us in tune and in touch, in harmony, in sync, whatever you want to call it, with all the parts of life and have a greater understanding. We need to learn how to make peace when our hallelujah is broken. We really need, and I know this from practice, and I'll share this in a minute, from something I just did this week, because I always try to live the topic for the week. And if this topic was harmonizing with life, I had to do that. It doesn't mean the big things in life necessarily. We've got to start with the little things. But we've got to find a way that we can start being in sync with a greater understanding. So this week, now, when I said Kirk does not use the washing machine, I really don't know how to use the coffee maker. I don't know. Kirk loves his coffee. Right, Kirk? Right, Bips? You love your coffee. We've been married 46 years. I don't think I've ever made a pot of coffee <laughs> because it's his thing and his coffee pot, and he loves it. But also, the temperature of what he drinks is extremely important to him. <laughs> so he makes his cup. Of, I don't remember this when he was younger, so I'm not sure if this is just a, you know, maturing thing or what, but he'll pour it. I, I drink whatever he gives me, you know. He doctors it up with my little stevia and my, you know, whatever milk I have for the day, hemp milk or whatever. He, he you know, does that. And I drink it if it's too hot, ouch. And then I lose it throughout the morning and find it, and then I drink it cold. It doesn't matter. But he likes his coffee a certain temperature, so he puts his coffee mug in the, in the freezer for one minute <laughs> before he drinks it. But that's not a problem, because I don't run into the coffee cup in the in the freezer, but I do run into the glass he keeps empty in the refrigerator because he likes his water colder. So he likes his glass cold. So sure enough, every time I, that glass has ESP because I swear every time I want something in the refrigerator, that glass is in front of what I want. And I was getting really upset. And I kept saying, Kirk, why do you keep your glass? You know, I was getting really huffy about it. And then I realized he likes his water cold and how wonderful he has a solution for that. So now I open the refrigerator and I find the glass and I bless it 
And I say, thank you for bringing Kirk some cold, refreshing water to make him happier and nourished and uh, fluid or whatever, I don't know. But uh, so it changes everything. But who changed? The glass didn't move. Kirk didn't change. I changed. I changed my thought about something. You know, in the mind of God, there are no sizes of things. If we can do it about something that little, as a little tiny cold glass that's empty in your refrigerator, you can do it about whatever's important to you at the time. We have that ability to change our life, change our thinking, do whatever that is. We have to learn to think straight. How's your relationship with yourself right now? How are you feeling about you? Because I'll tell you, if we want to harmonize with life, if we get on good terms with ourself first and foremost, it's going to bring everything else in alignment. Do you see when I was fighting life, although it was a silly little cup, I was the one that was upset. If we get fine with ourselves by harmonizing with what our experiences are outer, but it starts with the inner, if we are on good terms with our life, everything else falls in place. Think of something in your life right now that's causing you, it could be a big upset, little upset, something, because we all have that. That's part of the experience of life. You know, as Rumi says, if you get irritated by every rub, how are you going to get polished? And we're all in the process of polishing ourselves, so we have rubs all the time. So think of one, and let me ask you, are you part of the problem? are part of the solution. Because we're creative beings, and we're here that we have not only our mind, but we can use the mind of God. We can use that and be used by it to create solutions to things. That's why we're here. Use me, use me. God needs us to be used, to share the light. I want you right now to be true to yourself. But make sure the self you're being true to is your best self, not the self that thinks they can be better than somebody else, not the self that thinks, oh, I'm superior. Look at that. I'm talking about the self that knows, the best self that's in alignment with all life. It doesn't, again, mean we have to spend our precious time with lots of things we don't like. We're here to find what we love and put our focus on that, but not fight what is. We can't do that. I believe the work we're here to do is the work of spirituality. And I'm going to kind of leave with this, but the work of spirituality is about, number one, harmonizing our divinity and our humanity, number one. And we do that by strengthening our connection with spirit. And it means our heart has to be open. And we do that through love. I want to share a quote from Rumi. I just, just ran into this. Love is the energizing elixir of the universe, the cause and effect of all harmony. Music is expression of harmony in sound. Love is expression of harmony in life. So first thing, open our hearts, and that's a simple practice of love. Love what is. Love right where you are. Love life. Number two is opening your mind. And open your mind through contemplation. And contemplation is quietly pra the spiritual practice of sitting and connecting with spirit. When you connect with spirit, with God, with life, with beauty, with light, whatever you want to call it, when you connect with that, you open in your mind to something greater. You know you're part of a greater whole. You know when you open into that wholeness, you can tap into the power of God, the wisdom of God, the love of God, the guidance of God. You can tap into all of that, and your life starts flowing in a harmonious progression. And the third thing, heart, mind, and body. We need our body to be fully present in the moment, not just a piece of us, but all of us to be present in the moment because that's where life is, that's where love is, that's where good is in this moment through breath, through awareness, to open up to be part of the good that's unfolding right here and right now. 
So what I want to leave today with is to understand that we have the tools right now to be harmonizing with life. I want you to leave now with the intention. Doesn't mean it's all going to go perfect or right, trust me. But leave with the intention of making things better of letting your best foot go forward. Because after you do the practice of opening your heart, your mind, your body in the moment, we've got to step forward into a greater possibility of life. This is who we were, and bring the goodness from there, but let's step into who we're becoming, to be more connected, more patient, more understanding, more loving. You know, Pick something that makes you feel that way in your life, anything, and make that your practice. Besides doing our meditation, our prayer, our contemplation, our spiritual reading, our dedication, all of that, pick something that makes you happy and start doing it so you can be in harmony. Rumi also says, there are way many ways to the divine. There are many ways to the, the divine. I have chosen song, dance, and laughter. Let's pray. Let's join together in this moment and unleash that song in our heart, the song that wants to be sung, the song that wants to sing its warmth, its color, its beauty, its joy, its uniqueness, and be part of the symphony of the wholeness of life, to be part of the goodness that's ever ready to be expressed through us and as us right here and right now. Let's take that song that's uniquely ours and let it fill our beingness until it overflows until the light from that song, the connectedness, the harmony of that song overflows and touches all we meet until we become that being that shows up and whose presence makes a difference. Because we've done our work, we know who we are, we accept all the goodness that we have and all the places, things we've done wrong, the mistakes we've made, and know they're part of this learning process. We are simply here to let the light, the song from within us grow, to fill us, that we can share it, to be it, to give it, to receive it, and to know that right where we are, we are not only blessed, but we are a blessing. It is together that we bring the harmony of life into, beautiful, into a beautiful symphony of creative energy new goodness and new light in this world. As I own this for myself, I see that for each and every one of you as I see us joining together in the song of the universe, the love that we have that connects us all. In this knowing, I just say thank you for our beautiful in-spirit community and the beautiful light and love of spirit that guides us and directs us every step of the way. I simply close this as we say together, and so it is.